So after fixing as much as possible with weight painting, we now want to create corrective bones, just like we did for the arm, so that we can fix the most important issues that we see. You can support CG Dive by purchasing this course or some of the exclusive courses on academy.cgdive.com. Subscription is also available. I'm going to scrub through the timeline to see what I have. And here in the sitting position, there are a lot of problems with the belly and legs clipping or cutting into each other. Here in the leg backwards position, I don't quite like how the glutes behave. We lose most of the volume of the glutes, which is not how it happens in, in real life. Then when the leg goes up again, there's this clipping into the belly. And here it is really, really obvious and really, really bad. And then when the lower leg bends towards the thigh, then again we have a bad clipping between these two body parts. So the first thing I'll try to address is this clipping between the lower leg and the thigh. And we are going to solve this in a very similar way to how we solve the arm. In the arm we added these two additional bones and an elbow bone. And for the leg we're going to do almost exactly the same thing. We're going to have one bone that kind of controls this thigh area or hamstrings, one for the calf and one knee bone if we need it. But doing the exact same thing twice is kind of pointless, so I want to try to make it a little bit more interesting. The bone setup will be similar because I like how that worked, but I'm going to do a different type of constraint to automate the process. It will be the action constraint, and if you haven't used this constraint yet, I think you'll love it. It is very, very powerful and fairly easy to use. Okay, let's go to the meta rig and start building our uh, additional bones. So I'm going to select this connection between the legs, the knee, and I'm going to press E to extrude a bone and move it towards the hamstrings. Again, one more time and move it towards the uh, calf. And one more time, constrain it on the Y axis and move it towards the knee. Now I want to select all of these bones and press Alt P, disconnect bone. I'm going to turn off X axis mirror for a second, delete the bones on the right side because I want to rename these new bones, I want to add constraints to them, and then when I'm done, I'm simply going to symmetrize the whole system. For the arm, I name these bones squash, which I'm not sure if it's the greatest name ever, but uh, it will work. So let's select this bone and press F2 and name it DF hamstrings squash and this one D DEF dash there is a dash after the DEF calf squash and this one will be simply DEF dash knee okay and similarly to the elbow control I want one MCH bone that copies the transformations of the shin bone so I'm going to select the shin bone, shift D, duplicate it, scale it down, make sure the your in individual origins. Then I'm going to go to pose mode, select the shin bone, shift select this new bone, control shift C, copy transforms. And I'm going to also rename this bone. And it's going to be MCH shin copy dot L. And I forgot to add .l to all of these bones, so let's do that really quickly. These are all of the bones that I'm going to need for the system, so let's make them row copy before I forget. I'm going to select all of these bones. Here I have the row copy uh, script that I created earlier, and I'm just going to press the play button. And then in bone tab, I can verify that all of these bones are row copy. And now I want to start creating the constraints. As I said, I'll be using the action constraint. Uh, what I want to 
have when I'm done is an automation that causes these two additional bones to automatically rotate as the shin bone rotates towards the thigh. So as the shin bone rotates in this direction, the calf bone will rotate backwards and the hamstring bone will rotate in the same direction as the shin bone. And as for the knee, I'm not quite sure. I'll just see what happens and then I'll adjust the motion of the knee as necessary. Add-ons are a great way to speed up your Blender workflow. Discover awesome free and paid Blender resources on addons.cgdive.com. So the action constraint. First, I'm going to need an action and then we'll make it so the rotation of this shin bone triggers that action. So my MetaRig armature already has an action. I'm not sure why, I'll, I probably created it by accident. So I'm going to press the X button and create a new action. And um, I'm going to call it over action cuff and hamstrings. I'm going to hide the ogre for now because the animation is distracting me. Pose mode. And now for these two additional bones, I want to set a rotation a keyframe. I currently have a king set on, so I'm going to disable it. And then I and choose rotation, then go, then go to frame 10. I'm going to rotate this uh, bone backwards towards the shin and this one I'll rotate towards the thigh. I have auto keying enabled so I probably created a bunch of unnecessary uh, keyframes and um, curves. So yeah all I need are the rotation curves. Everything else I'm going to shift select here and press delete and same thing for the the bone that drives the calf uh, deformations. Okay, back to timeline and let's see set king set to available again. Okay, now with this bone selected, I'm going to go into the timeline, select all keyframes, press T and choose linear. And same thing for this bone, linear. And this is the simple animation that we have. For the knee, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I guess I want to make the knee kind of follow the shin bone about halfway. So if this is the maximum position of the shin bone, then I want to go to frame one and set a keyframe for the rotation of this bone. I have keying set on, so I can go to the item and press I over the rotation values and then go to frame 10, rotate, to about here. Location and scale keyframes were created, so let's delete them. And then select all keyframes T linear. Okay, turn off auto keyframe, delete the keyframes for the shin, and press Alt R to return it to the default position. Now I'm going to set up the actual action constraint. Let's select this little MCH bone that I created, then shift select one of the bones that need to be automated, control shift C and choose action. Then under bone constraints, let's set it up. The action that I want to use is the calf hamstrings action. And I want the automation to happen based on the X rotation of this bone in local space. This is the X rotation. In target range, we can set up when the action will start to get triggered. In other words, at what degree of rotation of the shin bone will the calf and hamstrings bone start to perform their action? So if I rotate the shin on the y-axis, I imagine that around this area, the animation will need to be triggered. 
I can be even more precise by going to the generated rig and testing things there. But before I do that, I noticed that uh, my one of my bones is not parented correctly. This uh, calf bone should be parented to the shin bone. So control P, keep offset. Okay, now let's unhide the generated rig and alt H to unhide the ogre. I'll unhide the leg FK controls, go to pose mode, and let's switch to FK for a second. Auto King is off, so this uh, change won't be uh, recorded as part of my animation. So around here, at minus 65 degrees, I want the calf and hamstrings animation to start to kick in. And then the maximum rotation I'm going to want is around this area, which is 800 and five degrees or so. So 65 to 105. Okay, let's go back to the meta rig, pose mode. And so for minimum range, I'm going to input 65 and for maximum 105. The action range are the keyframes that will be taken into account. As you remember, our action starts from frame one and ends at frame 10. So that's the values that we need to input. Now, if I try rotating this uh, shin bone, you'll see that after this area, which is around 65 degrees, the hamstring bone will start to rotate. So then all we need to do is select knee bone, the calf bone, and then shift select the hamstring bone, and then go to pose, constraints, copy constraints, now, if I rotate the shin bone, it will trigger the whole animation. One change that I probably need to make is for the knee. I want the knee animation to kick in right away and not at frame 65. So I'm just going to change this to zero. Now the knee starts to rotate right away and the calf and hamstrings start to rotate much later. Okay, now all I need to do is Symmetrize my bones. And everything will be set up for me on the other side of the rig. Let's try to generate and see if everything works well. I have new deformation bones on layer 29, so I need to select the character, shift select the bones, control P, and choose with um, empty weights. Then shift select the character again and go to weight paint mode. Now, if I control click these new bones, uh, none of them have any weights yet, so I need to apply those. These settings look good to me, so I'm going to start clicking in the hamstrings area. Now nothing happens because I have the restrict option on. So I'm going to turn it off and paint away. If you remember from the automation of the arm, we did paint weights on both sides of the limb. So let's do the same thing here. I'm going to paint on the front of the leg as well. Then control click the cuff bone and paint and I also want to paint in on a little bit on the front but not on the very front because on the very front we have bone and it won't displace and for the knee I want to paint in the knee area and that will be enough now I want to test my action and fix the weights as I'm watching the actual deformations. Let's select the legs action here and move through it. I can already see that the weights that I just painted are way too strong. And another thing that we could change, uh, we'll see if we need to, we could change the animation that is triggered by the action constraint. We could make these correction bones rotate more or less.
we could also change the range, which will affect when this animation starts to perform. But first, let's try to work on the weights. So this calf control probably has too strong of an influence over the lower leg. So let's paint more weights for the original deformation bones, and that will reduce the effect of the uh, correction bone. A little bit of blurring now. I'll just select each of the bones and blur a little bit. I can also work over here between frames 380 and 400. Let's paint some weights back into the original deformation bone and then blur. Select the first deformation bone and blur a little bit or maybe paint some positive weights on it, then blur. More blurring. I think this area should follow the correction bone a little bit more. So I think my calf bone is rotating way too much. So let's go to object mode, select the calf bone, and change the end of its animation to something like nine or even eight or seven. Let's stick to eight. So that will simply ignore the last two frames of this animation and the calf bone won't rotate as much. I'm going to paint more weights, positive weights for the lower shin bone. See what happens, then blur a little bit. That's it for this chapter. Please like, subscribe, and check out our other projects academy.cgdive.com and addons.cgdive.com.